Hi, welcome to this video day, which is on the uh, 5th of July. It's uh, Friday and just going to give our updated outlook uh, for the US dollar against uh, a number of other currencies. We'll be going to the charts in a moment. Now, in terms of the USD, we did have non-farm payroll today. Reaction, generally dollar positive. The number was OK. Uh, I think in terms of the USD, you need to see the bigger picture. NFP is just one bit of data in a bigger jigsaw, so to speak. And I think if you look at the big picture in terms of the USD, it looks pretty oversold against near enough all other major currencies. Our view is the dollar is probably going to go significantly higher over the medium term. And uh, just going to outline where we think the best opportunities are and our logic of why uh, we're pretty bullish of the USD. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to go to the charts, but please do keep in mind, it is my view as of this moment in time. Uh, it can, of course, change uh, in line with the market action. If you want all our trading techniques and our daily technical sentiment analysis of 14 major Forex pairs, you can click on the link beneath this video and get live access to our member centre. Right, now go and look at uh, some currency pairs, but just before we do so, just want to go and look at the bond market very quickly because there were clues even before non-farm payroll came out today that the USD would have a rally. Right, let's go and take a look at that market and then some uh, opportunities in Forex pairs. Right, uh, just on the 10-year uh, note contract, just very quickly, uh, it's always worth looking at US interest rates in relation to um, yeah, where the dollar might go. Uh, in terms of this 10-year note contract, just for anyone new to it, if it's going down, okay, it's indicating the market sees lower US rates. And it has been going down. Um, yesterday, I've highlighted that small candle there below the two level. Uh, market pre payroll seeing a 50% chance of a rate cut in July by the Fed. In my notes up here, I put uh, market seeing two cuts this year from the Fed and three more through to 2020. And yeah, the dollar has sold off on on this perception. Yeah, the Fed have just said they're going to be cautious, they haven't indicated any rate cuts at all. So our own view was that uh, dollar oversold uh, would probably rise today. Yeah, the payroll number, it was okay, wasn't it? Um, the headline number was a little bit better than expected, but wage growth a little worse than expected. But, um, you yeah, know, it doesn't point to rate cuts coming from the Fed, and that's why you're seeing uh, the dollar bounce back. And I think the big picture for the dollar is to gain more strength as we go forward. OK, so let's go um, a look at the major currencies first and give our view uh, on where we think uh, the dollar could go from here. All right, uh, just in our daily market update, look at a few majors. Uh, we're looking at uh, you know, a good few uh, USD pairs today, obviously the majors and also some lesser looked at pairs which we think offer good risk reward trades but let's start with uh, the uh, obviously the most popular major of all the euro usd uh, view on the euro usd uh, going down uh, we've done plenty of videos uh, individually on euro usd uh, yeah at the moment in at 113.65 we're at 112.18 it's about 140 pips profit we did get stopped out on that Bounce up to 114 though. Uh, but just so little upside in this pair. All the risks are to the downside. And it's not very volatile. Yeah, anyone who wants to trade Euro USD, I would say that. Uh, yeah, we've had very low volatility historically in this pair. But one of the big advantages of trading the pair is the attractive carry interest you get. Uh, you get 2.5% effectively. Think of that times 10 leverage, that's 25% per annum or two percent per month it's a decent return yeah the upside in this one just so limited that yeah, there's a lot of downside i do feel we are going to break heavily to the downside i've got 108 and 104 50 as my targets but i think we're going to break these chart lows to get the volatility up and a big trend to the downside but in the interim uh very attractive interest rates and i see little in little upside there's nothing good going on in eurozone as i've said previous videos some um, central bank really struggling to uh, kickstart the zone they've got stimulus negative rates etc 
everything favours the USD going forward for us. Now, in terms of um, next pair here, GBP USD, I'm not going to look at this one from perspective of US dollar strength because I'm actually looking for an opportunity to buy the pound. Um, in terms of the AUD USD, I'd like to look at this one as a long term position trade. I think it looks really good. Uh, only just in this trade again. And no real movement in, in terms of our position. Now, in terms of what I quite like about the pair is we have this rally up here. That's the RBA cutting rates. Then basically we have the rally after the rate cut. It was largely expected. Come to resistance, now back down again. That level there, 7050, looks pretty firm. Um, I just now feel if we go through the... Uh, Sixty nine fifty level here. This twenty day moving average down to chart lows, then seventy, then sixty. Okay, and keep in mind with the AUD uh, and any commodity currency, they are just so sensitive to global growth. Global growth is slowing up, and it's not going to turn around. Even if you have a you know, solution to trade tariffs between you know, the US and China, uh, interest rates favour the dollar. Yeah. For us, a good long-term trade. Yeah, for patient trend followers, I think AUD, USD, short is a good one. In terms of Japanese yen, uh, we're not looking to be long the dollar here. We're just out now yen bullish, as I'm sure regular viewers uh, of our videos know. I'll do, be doing an update on uh, my yen bias or my yen view <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, USD CAD, uh, I, I really like the look of this trade. Um, USD, obviously the market pushed it down, uh, you know, with the perception of the US or the Fed cutting rates. But on the other side, you know, CAD has had some decent numbers as well. However, you know, all the good news now is in the price. And we've bounced. And we're above the 131 level as I'm doing this video. And I just now feel uh, we're going to get up to basically 134, then 135. You can see my level of entry uh, and stop. Uh, it just looks so attractive from a risk to reward point of view. There's no more good news coming for the Canadian dollar uh, in our view. Okay, um, So can Canadian dollar for us, uh, one of the most overbought majors, or most overbought major in the short term. I mentioned it when I was doing uh, you know, the yen video. You know, want to go short the CAD on the yen. Also, we want to buy the GBP on the CAD, which I'll cover in another video, but I'll do uh, yeah, my British pound uh, kind of contrary stance. I think the pound is going to have a big rise. But uh, this one here, I just think looks so attractive from a risk to reward point of view. Also looking for oil to get a bit of a hammering. Um, it's had a little bit of a rally back recently. I think oil's going down. That should weigh on the CAD as well. Right, let's go and take a look at uh, some more USD pairs. All right, uh, on uh, USD CHF and in terms of the USD, ah, yeah, she's had a big fall down. And this big fall here, regular views are now, we just love when you get a big fall outside of an outer Bollinger Band, this orange line here, you can buy back within. That's a trade setup we always go for. And it's worked quite nicely here. Uh, I think USD go back up to chart highs. Uh, Swiss franc, um, yeah. No interest rate earnings there. They've obviously got negative rates. Uh, you just do not see uh, the USD now doing anything other than going back up towards chart highs. Everything favours the USD. A little bit more of a choppy pair, but again, it illustrates that uh, big fall outside of the outer Bollinger Band and how yeah, good it can be in terms of a risk-to-reward kind of setup. Buy it back within. The rest on a major level of support as well. Now worked our way higher. Uh, going back uh, to chart highs uh, in terms of despair in our view. Uh, let's see, USD CNH, USD TRI, USD MXN. Uh, I like the look of this one actually. Uh, it looks a fairly messy chart, uh, and it is. However, what I like about it is that uh, speculators are heavily short the USD. Okay. And uh, we're testing and holding a major level of support. Okay. Get through there, up to there, then probably up to 2050. 
great looking risk to reward trade. You've got near record speculative short position in the trade. Um, Mexico, good news is running out for the peso in terms of yeah, Mexican central bank going to be cutting rates. And Mexico is really suffering with the slow up in global trade. Only a small position, but the risk to reward as a buy looks really, really good. Um, USD Huff. I've said this before in, in videos. If you are bearish of the the euro, go sell euro proxies or buy the US dollar on them. Uh, we've bought the US dollar on the proxies and uh, this yeah, the Eastern Europeans have been some of our favourites. And I'll come to my favourite Eastern European currency in a moment. But yeah, you did have the big sell-off there, the bounce, and then up she comes. Um, she's not just going to there, she's going to 300 in our view. The actual um, have a look at proxy currencies. Yeah, they're, they're kind of emerging market currencies as well. So they kind of suffer if the euro is going down. Uh, but they also suffer with yeah, the slope in global trade as well. We'll come to a couple more Eastern European proxies at the moment. Uh, in terms of commodity currencies, probably uh, a, a really good long, well, it is a good long term one, like the AUD USD in our view. It's um, sorry, NZT USD. And great value there, if that's just a correction of oversold. It hits into a weekly level of resistance, and now it's coming off again. Uh, very little upside to this one, a lot of downside. We've got 60, then 50 on the downside. So a long way to go from where we are here. Again, for patient position traders, I think this looks a great trade. Value, fantastic uh, selling opportunity. Um, Another currency we consider really weak uh, going forward is Swedish krona. Obviously, another European currency. It's, it's a little bit uh, of a euro proxy, but um, in terms of it, it does kind of move a little bit more detached than, let's say, the Eastern European currencies we looked at. But this is, uh, yeah, obviously a nice fall, a bit of a rally, then the big fall. Uh, this this is just a fantastic buy for us. Everything uh, in Sweden is going wrong. Okay, uh, yeah, they've got you know no interest rate earnings on their currency. They're doing stimulus, etc. Uh, the economy is doing really badly. It it just isn't a good situation in Sweden. It's not going to turn around anytime soon. Uh, for us, a great buy going all the way back to chart highs, and I think we could trade as high as 10 longer term. So Swedish krona, uh, just a, a great sell on the USD. Uh, it's got no good news coming for it, in our view. It's also sell on the euro. It's a sell everywhere, the Swedish krona. If it's a, a kind of safer currency or a safe-ish currency, uh, Swedish krona, a sell. Right, let's just finish up with a, a few more pairs. I just want to look at those uh, two Eastern European proxies, which I just mentioned a moment ago, which I think look really good. Uh, so let's go and look at uh, just a few more charts. Right, just a four, sorry, just a few more uh, USD pairs. Uh, this is USD SGD, Singapore dollar. And I think this is a great uh, trade for trend followers. So uh, Singapore, see my notes, it's slowing up, basically major hub in Asia for transport. Also, it's a major exporter. Yeah, China's slowing up. Most of South Asia is, so uh, that's going to impact on the SGD. But yeah, USD gets pushed down on those interest rate perceptions. Big level of support, it's come off the level of support, and now looking uh, pretty strong uh, as we end the day. Going back to here, then 144. Dollar has got uh, the interest rate advantage as well. We yeah, have just going uh, higher. Uh, in terms of um, what have we got next? Uh, here we go. Uh, we've got the USD CZK. I, I just really do like these Eastern European proxies. We've already seen the half. They're very similar chart formations. This one comes down, get some support come in here, big blue, and now we're off to the upside. A lot of potential in this one. 2315 our view, which is way off the top of the computer. Um, yeah, they are. I'm not sure if I said it earlier, not only will they go down if the euro weakens, but they're also emerging market currencies as well. So very susceptible to what's going on in global trade. And actually in terms of this one, so I've done the chart, uh, she's moving nicely up 
as we come into the close. So more upside. You're not too late to get in on these trades or any of them. Um, I think they all look uh, good, the ones that I'm giving you know, here as my favourites. Uh, uh, USD PLN, just like uh, the CZK, really. Uh, just, yeah, you could do, did I say this really? You could do all three together as one trade if you're not sure which is going to do uh, the best. That's what I do sometimes. I just cannot decide which is going to move the quickest. Just do all three. I won't get the best. I won't get the worst in terms of the trade. If you have, I'm not sure if I said this earlier as well. My memory must be fading me. But uh, if you want an opinion on what are the best trades, uh, in my opinion, or levels in relation to pairs, just feel free to Skype or email me. So I like the look of um, USD PLN as well. And I quite like the look of this one uh, for a small trade. It's USD RUB. Big fall down. It's the Russian ruble. And now we're working our way back up. Uh, it's a bit similar in many respects to the MXN. We've got a lot of speculators short. And uh, it's near a record in terms of USD RUB. And with so many speculators short, I just don't think there's going to be any more selling pressure. And I just feel that the stop's going to get run and just go all the way up to this level, possibly even to 67.50. Um, looks a good trade. You only need to risk it back behind here. I think it looks good. Uh, yeah, so there's a variety of um, pairs in terms of where we're bullish of the USD. And uh, in terms of um, USD, I think yeah, the recent correction that we've seen, it is a buy. Uh, interest rate perceptions of the market, way too bearish. Um, USD going up. Uh, the economy is doing OK. Um, yeah, if they do start cutting rates aggressively, that would just mean that everything is so bad in the global economy, the USD will probably go up on its safe haven status anyway. Uh, so yeah, generally pretty bullish of the USD or most uh, Forex or in most Forex pairs. Exception, Japanese yen, uh, which we're very bullish of. And in the short term, we are looking uh, for a bounce in the GBP against the USD and uh, just about every other major. It hasn't happened yet. I think it will. I'll be doing updated videos on the yen and the pound probably over the weekend. But that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care. Have a good day.